What is up YouTube, it's Kingfisher745, and welcome to episode 89 of All Hail the King. In this episode, as I promised on the podcast, we're going to feature Beetle, the newest PvP reward hero. And we have three different team-ups for her that I think are going to work out very well. Now for those who may have missed the podcast, you can find it at the link in the description. Check out www.giantsizeteamup.com. There you'll find all sorts of comic related resources, and I'm sure you'll find something you like. So check it out now. As far as our first team up in this one, I said we were going to use Union Jack. And certainly Rocket Raccoon and Spider-Man Noir were other possibilities. But there's something about Jack that I really like. He's just an awesome character, I mean, you're going to get a bunch of preemptive counters, which I love. Especially since our agent's going to be pulling those off as well. At least against buff and debuff actions. And if you're wondering what does that, it's the Cognitive Foreboding Device. Hopefully you picked that up in the last spec op, because it was part of the task list research bar. You didn't even have to win it on a roulette, which is great for me because I think I only won one thing. Maybe two. But I couldn't win the ring, I couldn't win the Dino Dagger or whatever it was called that I really wanted, and I didn't win the Epic Boss set piece either. Or the Daily Roulette. So yeah, it didn't go that well. Too bad we couldn't research the set items. I hope they never do that again. That was a big letdown. But anyways, back to Union Jack. He's going to take a bunch of different turns. Basically his free action, level 9. Or sorry, I mean quick action. So let's not confuse them. Then he is a scrapper, so he'll do a follow-up attack. And you can see what my agent does when he joins in. An absolute massacre of that enemy agent. Then he preemptively counters Enchantress. And Union Jack's going to keep doing that. Unfortunately, she lives with hardly any HP remaining. So, actually, she gets to heal back a little bit. But with Beetle up next, I'm not too concerned. Unfortunately, Smitten does stop our amazing debuffs. But on Beetle's turn, we'll use Playbook. Then our Bertha. This easily drops Enchantress and does a big hit to Beast. So on his turn, he'll use Jekyll and Hyde, but he's going to miss all of the attacks on Beetle. And for that, he'll take a counterattack, which also triggers our teammate, Union Jack. So that's going to be the end of this first match already. Like I said, a pretty solid team up. And I do like how they work out together. After that, our attack team of Hybrid and Beetle are taking on a very fast attack team. Spitfire and Star-Lord. She unfortunately goes after Beetle right away but then switches to our agent, and he actually goes intangible. So that's pretty much a wasted attack. Don't worry though, just because he's intangible doesn't mean he's not going to follow up on an attack, and often obliterate them. So since they're blocking debuffs, we'll use our level 1 from hybrid. Then Beetle's going to join in, and our agent finishes her off. So that's exactly what I was talking about. The enemy agent tries to hit us for that, but once again, we're still intangible. So no dice. It's pretty nice basically one-shotting people while not being able to be targeted. I know it was sweet for everyone running it last season, because I faced it over and over again. But as far as Beetle, we do have the Hair Trigger and Powered Ice 08 on her. So we'll keep using her level 2, and after that she'll follow it up with her level 1. At the end of it, it's going to mean decent damage. And lots of debuffs. Well, if the enemy team can be debuffed. If not, damage is damage. So we'll take it. And since they do have blasters, she gets an extra turn as well. Now after yet another enemy tries to attack our agent, they fail, and will preemptively take out the enemy agent. So with our last action, we'll just use the rapier and certainly end it. A really quick and easy win, and that's going to be the theme for this episode. But make sure you stick around till the end. There will be a special battle. For our third team though, we're using Ant-Man and Beetle. And Ant-Man with the cooperative A-ISO on his summon attack can actually provide opportunist debuffs as a quick action. Then with his pint size surprise, he's going to deliver some nice damage and often a follow-up attack. For now though, unfortunately the enemy team does have the Mystic Shroud. So we're just going to go ahead and hit Rocket with all we have, and hope my agent joins in and finishes him off. 
There is a rapier hit, but Rocket's still alive. Fortunately, the Cosmic Cardinal comes through, and that's the end of the most annoying character on the enemy team. Honestly, the key to beating this team, I feel, is taking down Rocket. So that's always going to be my strategy. Next, though, we do have to remove that Mystic Shroud, and hopefully then Beetle can go to work. Not to mention Ant-Man. Double pint size surprise attacks are very nice indeed. Beetle, though, is going to get reflected, and that stops her attacks. Really unfortunate. Then, the enemy Spider-Man Noir hits their own agent for big damage. We're going to use that summon attack as a quick action. Then, pint size surprise on the enemy agent. So, two down, one to go. This shouldn't be too tough, but we do want to see Beetle get at least one more attack. So let's use Alluring Light, then on her turn, the Playbook, which we have the Manifesting A-ISO on, and that's going to set it up to trigger that Deadly Crits. Basically, a lot more damage. And with that, we take down Spidey Noir. So there it was, a pretty decent showing from all three teams, and Beetle can certainly deal some damage herself. But since that was going to be such a short episode, I decided to go ahead and do one more match. This was the match. It probably looks crazy right off the bat. Kang? But yeah, that's right. We're facing a Kang team. He used to be insanely overpowered, and I honestly was still worried as soon as I saw him. I knew it wasn't going to be good. And as you're going to see in this match, my fears were correct. First of all, once he goes out of time, you never know if you're going to be landing hits on him. Secondly, as you can see, we're barely punching through this shield, even with our high-powered attack. Then the enemy agent basically also plays it perfectly. He uses the scroll of Ruddimroth, then smothering shadow right after. So Ant-Man gets absolutely crushed. Those debuffs are insane. I mean, look at his HP. I figured this is over. Kang takes a million turns. Or at least it feels like that. And all of our health is ticking off the dots that we can't remove. So yeah, I mean, it definitely looked bad. And at the same time, you're thinking, a Kang team, really? A Kang team's going to decimate us. But that's exactly what it looked like. Especially since we can't even land our rapier hit on him. Now that's bad. Then watch this flurry right here. All these Kang attacks. In a channeling glove follow-up each time. Just over and over on my agent. Honestly, I didn't even think about using that glove with someone like Kang. I haven't thought about that glove at all in a while. But yeah, pretty sick. And at this point, my agent's going to go down. But hey, we kept fighting. And on Beetle's turn, like I said, we have the Hair Trigger E-ISO. So she follows it up. And she gets that rare triple attack. I figured, hey, at least that's something to see. And before my agent dies, he's going to join in, but somehow misses everything. Then to make matters worse, the enemy agent once again does a great move. He shields and heals the team, just as we had Kang on the ropes. But I did figure at least now we can finally debuff them. So we use our summon attack as a quick action. Then it's time for pint size surprise. After we finally punch through that shield, we get a big hit. And once my agent joins in, Kang is nearly knocked out. Oh, but guess what? It isn't over yet. He barely hangs on to life. With just over 500 health. Now that's terrible luck. And so we have to once again sit through his turns. Pretty sick. My agent being knocked out is also not good. But at least we do take him down with a counter attack. And with what's probably going to be Beetle's final action, we will use the playbook and her Bertha. It can't even break through the enemy shield. Where's Bursting when you need it? To be completely honest with you, I think I had Bursting on Ant-Man's level 9, and just completely didn't think about it. I totally forgot. I think just the whole surprise and shock of the Kang team maybe got to me a bit. Actually using that Bursting would have been nice. So if you do face a Kang team, make sure you have that and you use it. 
Now at this point, at least Ant-Man's doing some damage with his pint-sized surprise. But we are facing a scrapper enemy agent. Still though, Greatest Allies is off of cooldown so we can use that. And back to our main attack. Now one thing I have to say is, these dots ended up lasting forever. I felt like my health was never going to stop going down from dots. It was extremely frustrating. But as far as attacks, the enemy agent setup really didn't seem to have any. Or else we would have been doomed. Fortunately though, I was trying the mauling A-ISO on pint size surprise so it applied flanked. And I had the bloody A-ISO on our level 1. So after he did double pint size surprise, he did a break in which also placed bleeding on the enemy and that bleeding ends up sealing the deal so yeah crazy match but we do end up pulling it out now I was just curious about the enemy's armory but it was all spare playbooks so full level 15s and max defensive armory stats a great match and a great way to end this video so I just want to say thank you all for watching Please like, comment, and subscribe. Then until next time, good luck, and take care.